I hope it is nice weather on your side also. So today we are going to talk about uh, inventory, inventory management. Yeah, very interesting and exciting topic, especially in, in uh, today's times because of this pandemic and everything. Uh, because think about it, uh, other things which we have been doing throughout the throughout the semester. Uh, for example, you know, we just looked at supply chain management in the last session. But if we go back a little bit, one of the sessions we were talking about forecasting, for example. So think about all the forecasting uh, which companies would have would have done uh, in terms of you know what they will sell, what raw materials they will need, all those type of things which they were they have been thinking about, planning about, and now see you know. Uh, it has been a couple of months and the world is being disrupted by coronavirus and even now we are not sure like what is what would the future be like uh, because uh, it, it some people are saying we might have to adjust our lives uh, with with this virus uh, at least till the time until we find some vac vaccination or something some cure or something uh, from uh, from this so think about that this this can really this can really uh, bring down whole supply chain management and one of the areas in supply chain management is inventory so all the models which companies would have had forecasting projects management uh, even things like quality management would be disrupted because think about the raw materials which they might have stored in the warehouse and then maybe think about it they have some shelf life and then think about it that they are uh, uh, some of things would get expired maybe not in such a short time like not maybe in two three months but then it depends on you know the products some products really do have a shorter shelf life and even if you don't want to think about that think about the cost of uh, you know storage uh all those type of things uh finished good ready but maybe you know it cannot be dispatched distribution problem uh overall the supply the consumption of of various products just like consumption of some products would have gone up in these times same way there are many products where consumption has gone down so how companies are going to you know deal with this no one was prepared for that and uh, for smaller businesses, yes, it can be very challenging uh, because they have to pay. Many times they don't have their own property. They are paying, you know, rents and all these taxes and so on. And they cannot run to keep on paying that when there are no sales. So small businesses, yes, but even big businesses, they are having serious, serious problems uh, with this, with this. Um, inventory management especially in the context when uh, these big businesses they had a lot of money so they had invested in technologies and if you remember we this is how we started our semester technologies and all those type of things we were talking about even in last session we were talking about artificial intelligence so their inventory their forecasting and you know quality and these type of things are many times run by our, uh, by technologies which take data from you know previous consumption rates and behaviors and trends and all of that has changed think about it you know uh, yes small businesses would have problems but big businesses would have even bigger problems because their investment is big so they are when they go when they make when big business make money they make big money same way when big businesses lose money they lose big money too so it is both way it is it is big uh, so think about think about that anyways uh, I, I want you to please uh, participate in discussion that is why i i gave you some time so maybe you could think about it at least take a take a moment to think about it so so please tell me please help me with the with the, with how we will produce uh, uh, proceed with this uh, so inventory management please tell us uh, what is your in understanding of inventory management? What is inventory management? Please tell us uh, why 
why you think it is important what is the significance of it uh, most importantly from your work experience if you can tell us some stories some stories of some success uh, businesses got uh, when uh, when they used uh, inventory management and link it with supply chain management the last discussion also uh, supply chain management various issues in that so anything you you can see on that i would be really really thankful uh, so please yes go ahead please so he was using some examples tashvi from my experience so real life pre um pre covid so my team and i sat and looked at what we needed to do as it relates to ramping up our safety measures at, at, the, at the property so we realized that we, we would oh, Shane, please, uh, please if you if you can speak uh, louder you might have to shout a little bit so please uh, bring the oh. mic closer and uh, speak uh, a little louder please thank you i'm um, hold on elijah you're too loud that is on that is uh, in class all right sorry that the boys are playing so it's a bit all right so you hear me now yes yes we were hearing you earlier also but i'm just oh. requesting if you could speak speak louder it would be easier for for us to hear thank you okay all right yes yeah, so i was saying that when we looked at when we looked at the situation of the sanitize sanitization of the property bearing in mind covid was on its way to jamaica and stuff we realized that we would have needed more supplies and so my inventory specialist placed an order with the looking at looking at our current usage our consumption we did we did basically a projection of how many how many more would need of the supplies bottles and cases and stuff and then we placed an order with one of our main suppliers unfortunately the supplier was unable to meet the demand because of um pre-existing orders and um you know if the, 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 the challenge we had was that this my inventory my inventory specialist was was asking for that order from before even covid came so once we heard about covid in china and then it was come creeping up into all parts of the world and stuff you know we sat down as a, as a leadership team and looked at it and said boy we don't like all this look you know we we interact with tourists every single day let us put measures into place as it relates to you know sanitizing every day and stuff before we open and we close when we looked at the supplies we know that we would have needed so like two months before it got really bad we placed the order but then the supplier for, for whatever reason delayed kept delaying because they thought that it wasn't as serious and they're like oh this is way more than your, 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 your um minimum order uh the moq i should say and so we were saying yeah we know it's more than what we usually order but we really need this and this was uh, the lysol and the disinfectant that were really really scarce hand sanitizers as well fast forward to you know with covid being in the mix um we were unable to get the same hand sanitizer that we were promised and the same lysol that we were plan promised and looking at it you know we were sitting down assess reassessing the situation and you know the only thing that we could have come out with was poor planning on the on the on the um the supplier's part because when we placed the order they were unable to fulfill it and they didn't take necessary measures um, necessary steps to actually um top up their inventory so that they could provide us with the with the necessary stuff that's one example i'll leave the rest for the rest of the staff thanks thanks very much oshane for your contribution and a uh, very interesting example couple of things it it makes us reflect if you guys were listening carefully uh, dynamic dynamic nature of this job inventory management very dynamic nature uh, and uh, uh, please pay attention to that line where oshane was telling us that uh, uh, although there were some planning going on and people were you know thinking that covid is coming and you know we need to do something about it planning and all those things but still he he said something like on the on the lines that there was still some delay in the in the sense that uh, some people can have this understanding that maybe you know it is not that serious even if you if you go back in in time and even in in our discussions in the earlier part of the semester when we knew that you know uh, china is facing uh, covid and 
and that type of uh, some disease is there and they are doing thing but remember that conversation which we had very brief we did not even you know pay attention much to it uh, so just like i think two three minutes we had a little discussion and uh, some some friends mentioned that you know uh, china is uh, you know uh, uh, it is they are just you know it is some game or something like that it is nothing to be you know uh, serious about this will people are taking it very seriously uh, uh, it is a minor thing some people said that and you know there is it is not their those people's fault or anything i am not trying to say that they were wrong everyone all of us uh, i you guys no one no one really thought that you know it, it will go to this time that you know it is like 500 plus cases in jamaica yeah so so far from china but not not that far again so th that that thing that you know some people thought that you know, it's not maybe serious and please pay attention to some of the terms which which oshane used which comes in inventory management you might want to do a little reading on on those because a couple of words i picked up like for example moq he's talking about moq yeah so don't get worried about these terminologies like it is just oq is order order quantity quantity uh, minimum order quantity like other terms like eoq economic economical order quantity what would be these yeah even if you don't know economic order quantity and 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 uh, an order quantity which is most uh, an order uh, uh, a quantity uh, which is mo most economical to order yeah that is what it is eoq or minimum minimum order quantity so uh, companies so pay attention to those type of terminologies in the slides also and even if we don't discuss in in class just run a google search and see how companies are are are, uh, are uh, dealing with this so these couple of things and i'm sure you also picked it up uh, picked couple of things uh, um, other things um, from what uh, that example was good which ocean gave us yeah so please think about it yes next please um, what well, please give us some example what is your understanding of you know uh, inventory management and so on yes go ahead please um sir a typical example for of inventory management since last week when the government announced that churches could reopen and that they would have to be doing temperature checks those handheld devices that are used for temperature checks those prices the prices of those things skyrocketed because the demand is up and there are very limited supply of them in jamaica not many persons stock them or have them in stock for sale so I, I don't think most persons anticipated that we would get to this stage where those devices would be something that would be well needed. So you don't have a lot of persons selling them. So I'm thinking that maybe we sat down and never looked that we'd get here. Even though we see it happening in other countries, nobody managed their inventory to say, let us invest in this and because we're gonna be needing them because most churches will not be able to open today and tomorrow because they don't have that particular machine in place to conduct the temperature checks thanks for this uh, this that's a lovely example so and so relevant with the with the discussion and so timely also you know so it has all the all the characteristics of a of a good example thank you very much des yeah so so think about it and i would like to link it with other other uh, with earlier discussions like for example we were talking about uh, governments uh, governance corruption those type of things uh, sometimes these are these are like inside information like like let's say that you know even two months ago uh, or one and a half month ago uh, government has decided that okay we might have to you know uh, make this compulsory that these machines would be there and so on and then maybe someone uh, uh, who is close associate of some uh, uh, some member of the government uh, they ordered shipment and now they will be able to sell it uh, and make some money and i'm not talking about us our government i'm talking about generally like these type of things um, i'm reading it in the in the press all the time uh, especially with the uh, with other things like uh, like masks uh, so i i read this story that you know in in some country i don't want to name the country but there are so many countries are facing these same problems 
so and you can look it up on on google uh, run a search or something so these masks uh, before uh, some governments make it compulsory uh, um, but they knew but they knew from their meetings they knew that they are going in that direction where they are going to make the masks compulsory uh, so uh, but this that was insider information at that time so but some people some business people or whoever you know close associate with those officials who were sitting in those um, in those meetings uh, they sometimes they started you know doing something in house uh, inside the country uh, and start making those uh, masks sometimes they were importing it from other countries where it were it was cheaper at that time something like that and then when it became compulsory to buy masks uh, those were the people who made a lot of money from from that because simple thing information they had the information that this is going to happen so they just invested in that and they knew that this is going to happen and so that is also interesting aspect of operations operations management when you are talking about on the government level. Uh, so very good very good example so with this and with the other example which Shane gave you can you can also think about like the the idea of being uh, foresighted how much important that becomes for for inventory management yes you need these things in these time but in the future what would you need uh, that really comes with you know uh, experience a uh, lot of experience good luck is also important i think uh, but you can have your own opinion on that luck if you if you believe on that luck and or if you believe that no it is just hard work and so on uh, and then you can link it with the with the forecasting models uh, so also link it with the discussion we had when we were meeting face to face like don't just rely on the models themselves uh, that would not be a good idea just to rely on the models uh, there is there are other things other variables which you gain from experience observation what is happening in other countries and so on uh, so so that you might want to think about yes what else what else uh, you, you can you can tell us tell the tell our tell our uh, colleagues um, any example of inventory management what is happening any best practice you can talk about that okay when we are when we are talking about inventory you should be careful about this you should be careful about that and so on that would be very nice yes please go ahead well sir i don't really work in a um a type of goods um environment and more service oriented so we don't really have much as it regards to inventory management i don't really have much um experience in regards to that but how what i can say in regards to it negatively affecting a company is that uh, um a while ago about maybe a year or two ago i did a an assignment on honeybun and um we discovered during the assignment that uh, majority as regards to their um their chain um supply chain management they use contractors most of their you know their trucks and delivery drivers are contracted um and as such they don't really have much uh, um they don't really own much um of those uh, those uh, trucks and as such, you know, sometimes their shipments when they're dealing with certain corporations, it can be late or delayed and it negatively affects them. Now, cut now to um, COVID when, you know, a lot of these delivery drivers, because they're contractors, right, they, are, they don't necessarily have uh, um, honey bun identification. And as such, you know, they're negatively affected by the whole um, and uh, we here at Scotia Bank use Honeybun as um, our main uh, um, delivery partner. And uh, we're realizing now that even though they might have the inventory and they are able, you know, to provide the goods that we're looking for, because it is that their supply chain is weak, um, they're not able to live up to the supply, um, the demand that we have. And as such, we have to use a different um 
a different bakery so we're actually using national now over honey bun even though you know it is that we we're selling or we we um the demand for honey bun products is is more than national because they think that the honey bun products are we can't get them the, the demand is there they probably have the inventory but the supply chain is is weak and as such they're now losing um sales thanks very much for for this example denisha I, I i really loved it very interesting example and let me ask you something Den uh, Den. Uh, uh this uh the the national i am i am um, i think uh, they have their own fleet like uh, when they they have their own transportation and the uh, and the vehicles yes unlike uh, uh honey national national have their own transportation right um, yes they do have i don't know to the extent um but uh, i i don't think that they have as much contracted drivers um that like honey bun honey bun yeah. usually majority of the delivery trucks are contracted and they rely heavily on those contracted drivers excellent excellent beautiful example thank you very much uh really loved it so a couple of things you can pick up from that so honey Uh, versus national so you can think about the the quality first which one's quality is 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 better so national has been for a for a very long time they have been uh they have been uh, leading uh, in many of the products which which they make uh, they are like kind of from their as their their name national they were kind of national brand very good very good company no doubt about that but then with time new competitions are emerging and one of them is is honey of course and uh, their quality uh, plus the pricing so price and quality both you need to think about that so two things one is quality pricing quality th those aspect and the next one is uh, supply chain management in the sense of distribution in terms of logistics in terms of uh, transportation how you are going to deliver so our friend gave us this very interesting information that honey uh maybe have less transportation of their own majority of them is contracted on the other hand a uh, national uh, uh if not all majority of their transportation is done they have their own vehicles and they have their own infrastructure to a, to a decent to a decent number and definitely more than more than honey or other competition which they which they have and it makes sense also because they have been in the business for so long and Uh, so they were able to improve their fle fleet and all those type of things over a period of time so they do have an advantage in the sense that they have their own uh, the, uh, their their own fleet majority of it so they are not that much dependent on contractors and unlike hanibana as our friend was explaining us they are dependent on on contracts a little bit more so that can have some challenges So these are two things you can think about one is that you know company has to where to invest you know that is the question where do we invest so honey of course honey new uh, especially when they are kind of couple of years ago when they were rebranding themselves and they came up with these very interesting nice small snacks uh, at a very good price and we spoke about them in in couple of sessions also if you guys remember so at that time they had this they, had, they knew that you know uh, these are the areas which they where they need to perform so they should we invest as a company should we invest in buying buying our own uh, trucks so we have control on that or should we do something on improving the quality uh, or productivity of the of the product so that we can bring the price down what should we do so at that time they must have decided that okay we can do the contract this thing we can do contract for now uh, we will build it over a period of time but right now we need to focus on on the on the quality and pricing and packaging these type of things so that is where they went and they definitely saw gains definitely uh, 
uh, in any grocery store you would go you would you would see honey honey very nice they they, they get very good location spot they get very good and people just love they a lot of sales you can see that uh, very easily not saying that national is i'm not trying to be little national or anything of course they are very big and they are backed by uh, very strong owners these people hoteliers uh, people and the national uh, company they are somewhere linked also so they are very very str strong uh, very strong uh, uh, very strong uh, like family which is behind behind this and they have years of experience and uh, very well diversified also uh, but on the other hand uh, honey honey bun uh, they may be focused more on quality and did not spend so much on on buying fleet uh, of their own uh, but now they might be facing some challenge they would have to maybe speak with couple of couple of banks or something like that maybe get some loans or something like that and and see what is what is happening uh, because this becomes critical in the sense that honey bun even if you say that honey bun quality is, is good it is not that nationals quality is very bad it is not that so they are reasonably at, at, a, at a reasonable pace with each other some people might still prefer national uh, some people prefer honey uh, but it is not that they are national is very far off from from honey in terms of i'm talking about collectively in terms of the networking in terms of their relationship which they have built over a period of time their uh, they are a household name everyone knows their name it is not that you know uh, people are not familiar with the company or and they have uh, they are like they have presence island wide uh, very uh, and they are very smart people working in 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 national just like honey bun also so these are some of the things you should be thinking about so a couple of things uh, quality versus managing your own fleet and linking it with supply chain management discussion and please pay attention to that pointer which uh, which Ben uh, mentioned she, she mentioned something on uh, weak weak links in the supply chain management so she said that weak links are being highlighted yeah so if you can recall last week's discussion uh, our friend kamla she also mentioned similar thing uh, with the with a hospital example or something like that uh, and she also mentioned that these times are just uh, bringing uh, the weak links in the supply chain to the forefront they were already there but it's just highlighting those weak links um, same way denisa also mentioned the same same type of in a different example in a different background but same thing supply chain management showing showcasing weak links if there are any weak links in the in the inventory management or just in time or economic order quantity or whatever you would want to talk about uh, very good thanks very much for participating in the discussion any other uh, let me take one more point uh, if if possible any other thing comes to uh, to your mind when you are listening to these uh, examples inventory management uh, any example you can share from your work or something like that that would be nice and also think about you know please link it with earlier discussions uh, we don't want to repeat the things which we already have already have said for example inventory management uh, in these grocery grocery stores and stuff like that we mentioned that honorable prime minister said it very clearly that there is no intention to complete lockdown he is not going to do that and we should take his words unless something very bad happens it is not going to happen that 24 7 there will be lockdown of grocery stores and people won't be able to buy they're not going to do that uh, uh, unless things are worse and we are far from we are far from worse so they are not and they have told he has said it multiple times reassurance that reassurance he is talking with the general public also but he is also engaging the business community because they, they cannot afford that their grocery stores and these marts they just close off for one one week or two weeks it's not it's not they won't be able to deal very nicely with that and then government they might ask 
government to you know chip in some of the losses they have they have faced and stuff like that so although he has honorable prime minister has said it multiple times still you would see that the behavior tendency generally speaking in the masses not everyone i'm not talking about not uh, sir not 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 everyone not everyone but uh, but many of the people they would go and in the in the grocery store they would go and they would just you know start buying and stuff stuff like that uh, buy more excessive buying so that also has big implications for inventory 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 management uh, because think about that if if you have like 12 boxes of any item whatever item it is let's imagine let's, let's think about this 12 boxes of any any item you can think about any you know regularly used item like milk or sugar or something like that so if if i go in the shop and i buy all 12 of those we can argue that the sales were done so the shop was able to sell so there is no loss for the shop we can argue that but if you think a little bit deeper it is a big loss for the shop that one customer came and he bought all of those because think about it he did some forecasting that is based on that forecasting he came up with the number 12 and he said i am going to buy 12 boxes or whatever cartons of this item so based on some some data he made that decision now i go in and i buy all of that yes now if when you are going to go and you are not going to find that item you will be going to some other store where you were not going earlier so you are a customer of this shop because you could not find what you wanted now you will go to some other shop when you go to that other shop based on your experience based on how you felt how they deal with you uh, other things which you saw uh, which you saw in that shop all of that experience it is likely that next time when you go you might go to that new shop thinking that last time when you went to the shop where you always go you did not find what you wanted so you might go to that shop again and then if the experience is good it might become your permanent habit so if that if the earlier shop shop a which i was talking about if they had 12 boxes which they bought for maybe 12 people they were forecasting that 12 people will come and uh, get one each if i go and i buy all of them yes we can argue that the sales were done the shop has made the, the sales but by the time new shipment will come all those customers which are not getting that that product they might have to go to some other some other shop and eventually they might eventually they might switch based on the experience and all those things which i am trying to so think about this think about this this is this can be this can be very very challenging situation also a uh, very good example thank you very much yes let's take uh, one more yes tasha uh, please go ahead thank you all right good evening sir um so my understanding well firstly i my my desk is really accounting for 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 the company's inventory um my understanding of inventory management is basically um the movement of goods within the company and uh, it's and how it communicates vital business activities like the losses of the business distribution of the business how we account for the inventory winnings of the business and etc um an example is i think maybe two months ago the inventory at work was sky high in debit uh x amount of kg equating to millions and we within the past two months we had to clear the inventory down so i think right now it's maybe less than fifty thousand um 
50000 uh, $50, that would be on the inventory, which I think the financial manager is going to write off. But it was very important, very critical for us to bring that down because it, it's the implications of that would mean that, okay, we had no 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 proper accounting of our inventory, no proper management of our inventory, and that would negatively affect the company. Um, also, at my workplace, when talking about inventory, I seldomly hear them saying the company's inventory. What I hear the managers and the VPs saying, okay, you need to clear your inventory. I am responsible for maybe 30 odd trucks. There are 80, 80 odd trucks employed to the company. I'm responsible for 30 odd, and then the others is split between two other ladies in the distribution accounts department. And what they would usually say to, to, to the three of us is, you need to clear your inventory. So, we are put in a position where all right this is our responsibility and uh, we have to get it clear and uh, i've learned i've learned i have learned a lot within post pre pre covid and post covid in regards to inventory i've learned a lot um i it's it's very demanding inventory management at my work day. Yes, so very interesting uh, example Tasha Tasha gave, and if you paid attention uh, to what she was saying, a couple of things we could we could pick up. Uh, she was talking about some kgs, and then she was giving the figures of of millions of dollars. So it could be worth a lot of money. So it, even if it is investment in the inventory, they don't want to keep it tied. They want it running, and and so on. So that was that was one aspect, and the other one which. Um, which uh, which I which I uh, which I made note of is that uh, uh, communication within the within the company. So yes, you have you have uh, um, you have a company. There are there are many different many different uh, departments. Uh, all departments would maybe and then even in departments, different units. You can break it break it down uh, yourself. Uh, and then uh, inventories, different type of inventories are needed in every unit, and then people are managing those inventories. So communication between units and communication between departments, and very timely, very timely communication. It has to be like, like kind of live communication. Uh, there is no, there is a minimum delay in the communication. Uh, Otherwise, the inventory can uh, can can face some some challenges. Uh, and another thing, which which maybe I don't think we we ever throughout the semester we did not had that that pointer. And Tasha helped us with that point. So she was she was saying they don't say a company's inventory. Yeah, they say they make it down to the to the unit or the person in charge that it is this this is your inventory and you are responsible for that and. You would you would see that because inventory is somehow linked with sales and with sales also you would you would see that sales sales numbers are like per person like you uh, you have this sales target to reach so you need to be responsible for that sale same with the marketing you are the one who will cover this region same for distribution you would be you are the person who is in charge of Hanover area and you are the person in charge of Negril and you are the uh, person in charge of Lucy and so on and so forth. So it's very like individual. They don't keep it at a complete level. They give you know uh, some type of responsibility to individuals and then uh, weekly or 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 fortnightly or monthly, depending on what is happening. They have to give their reports that what they able to meet their targets and and so on. So so very good. 
very good example very good example definitely the uh, as tasha was explaining us definitely you know you have to you have to get rid of your inventory spe specifically excessive inventory you don't want to keep it uh, keep it on the uh, in the warehouse uh, uh, for such a such a long time it has it has to keep on moving and you can link it with the other discussions also for example in job design uh, session we were talking about restaurants and you guys gave some very interesting examples for restaurants and and also you guys mentioned that some of the restaurants are 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 even you know they are they are they might even close they might not be able to reopen uh, because many times they have they do not have their own property so they have rented the place and uh, from their sales monthly sales they take out the rents and they pay the staff and everything so because they uh, many of them are uh, closed or they have very less business even to break even so they have just closed it and they have uh, let go their staff also it, that is the same session in you know one one of our friend mentioned that why to close the restaurant you can you can use the parking lot and start serving in the in the cars and that example one of our friends gave in that session uh, so very good very good thank you very much for participating in the in the in the discussion so far so you guys have given a uh, very nice examples uh, so uh, so i think uh, we can talk about some of the things which i wanted to uh, show uh, show show to you okay so um, of course we are going to you know just make some notes and stuff like that based on the excellent example of our uh, four or five friends all examples were excellent so you need to think about those examples and uh, keep an eye on how you know uh, this this pandemic progresses and uh, even in your own company it would be good to you know uh, talk with people who manages in inventories uh, all type of businesses have some type of inventory even if they are not manufacturers or or something like that how they are managing it uh, it would be very good to look at the software which they use so if you are not personally uh, involved with inventory management no problem just take 10 minutes uh, with the person who who is like who deals with inventory of any type like tasha was talking about inventory accounts or any type of aspect of inventory and ask them to show you quickly how the how the software uh, looks like uh, uh, just observe them putting in some numbers or taking out some report from the from the from the software you might not understand it 100% but that is not the point of it you just need to familiarize yourself a little bit that there are some specific software which companies use to manage inventory and uh, some technologies they they use uh, in the warehouse where they tag and where they scan and uh, different technologies for example rfid uh, scanning laser uh and you can read a little bit on that uh amazon is a wonderful example they do all these type of things advanced advanced things and uh, shortly we will talk about uh, them also in in the in the sense of inventory management but anyways let's look at uh, what we have um, um i think someone want to say something please go ahead if you if you want to say something or some example is i mean go ahead So as I look at the headline that I have there I am just remembering that the farming industry here um is having a pile up of inventory um and that is because most of them used to supply the hotels with goods and now that the hotels are closed they have nowhere basically to to offload some of those goods and when i read the second part of the of the article it said this is how companies are um are managing it um the government came in they stepped in and they said look here we have to help you with this situation and so they chose to create this online online platform where persons can order some of these goods for their households and so they're helping the farmers to you know offload some of these products that they have that will eventually spoil if they don't get them sold
excellent example christina thanks thanks very much for this and all of you guys even even although i am going to speak for a bit and show you some stories if something comes to your mind please stop me because what you have to say is is more important than what i have to say because we want to develop on what examples you guys give not necessarily the examples i am going to give but but anyways what christina is talking about farming and uh, all the issue which she explained so definitely governments uh, have to have to do something about that and that is the problem which uh, which that that is the problem which uh, developing countries are really facing because they are not very rich and uh, many of them have loans uh, from other 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 countries or i bodies like imf and so on so they have to meet those targets also although imf has uh, loosened the deadlines uh, a bit but still you know uh, even if they delayed for one year two year uh, countries still have to uh, repay uh, those loans they are not they don't uh, they, they have not uh, uh, they have not written them off yet at least they might uh, they might do it for a lit little amount but they are not going to write off all the uh, all the things uh, in that in that in that aspect uh, so many times governments uh, need to give uh, some subsidies but the challenge is that they don't but have enough money and this is where this is where this lockdown comes in this is where countries cannot then lock down although they know that if they don't lock down for like one month uh, one um, one week two week uh, consistently continuously then they have not really gotten rid rid of rid of this uh, this this pandemic just like china they just in that wuhan prince they just locked down completely for a period of time and then they were able to get rid of the rid of that but developing other countries with with minimum resources they cannot do that they don't have the sub, uh, subsidy they don't have the money to give subsidies and those type of things uh, to to their to their people so that is the challenge and that is why they want continuity of of operations and in that and in that uh, the uh, the in that the challenge comes that how to deal with that if you if you just if you just close if you just close then you would have to give then the businesses would have would face more pressure then you would have to give more and more subsidies and many people will go even out of business they might not be able to recover from that uh, and this farming is a is an interesting example because those people don't have the issue which christina faced that is that is very back in the discussion anyways let's 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 move a little bit so inventory is piling up during the coronavirus crisis yeah uh, our friend just gave us a recent example with the with the farming we should be able to relate if you are not familiar please run a google search you will see the story what is happening okay so what are they doing cancel orders I make <laughs> uh, not a rocket science but uh, but it can be very damaging for for the business and there is no need to elaborate on that you can think that what can be some of the some of the challenges which can be which can be faced sell more online go online keep on doing what you are doing go online that is something which companies are really doing and just to remind you again what the heading is inventory is piling up during the coronavirus what to do yeah, if inventory is piling yeah so this one is very interesting sell more online just like what we are doing uh, we did not stop our our sessions we just went online yeah. but again this online and e-commerce commerce has been there for a good good while now but then again companies were not really serious about that they were not doing something you know concrete on those lines but this time this pandemic has just urged everyone globally speaking to have some understanding of technology have some understanding of online environment so they can have some type of continuity now the businesses which will uh, which will make some earning from this which will which will see some benefit in this uh, when they will compare it from the past from pre pandemic times they might continue online this is a this is a 
this is or this is very probable that anyone who got benefit any business who got benefit in this time by going online they will continue online they why they would want to go back it does not make sense uh in some businesses they might want to because they may be the experience is different and they want to give some different type of experience so uh, it won't be 100 percent but many businesses can now shift so this can be a challenge you can look at the details in your own time uh, pushing goods to the off price channel yeah off price channel yeah if you if you think about the examples which some of our friends gave should be able to give some give some link they are giving some these are well known brands marshall i have highlighted it it's a well known well known brand tj max yeah these are well known well known brands uh, so you can you can think about that hold on to it hold on to inventory well yes but not not all businesses can can do that this is very interesting collaborate with other retailers collaboration that improves sales uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, in terms of uh, uh, using their resources uh, in terms of using uh, um, making using their uh, i should not say using using is not the right word uh, but uh, selling to their customers maybe you know so i was going to say using their customers you can think about a think about a better word maybe donate to a good cause that is also very interesting you know so especially remember in the last session uh, um, uh, supply chain management we were on a website and i showed you uh, some some line on corporate social responsibility and i said that uh, we said that uh, uh, many companies they uh, they have something like corporate social responsibility on their website and so on but this is a time if you can't do anything with the goods and you don't want it to waste and something donate it you know donate it and you can put it as your a csr uh, your, your your social responsibility so that is interesting so you can look at these ones uh, in more detail if you if you are interested but i want to show you a couple of them so covid 19 supply chain resources and and strategy strategy so this one uh, inbound logistics is the name of the website you should you should go on that website uh, time to time if you if you like these type of topics and you you want uh, you want to learn a little bit on that so supply chain resources and strategies they are they are talking about for example just in time shipment i am highlighting this yeah uh, we tight inventory to sales ratios yeah so just in time yeah so we spoke about it briefly last week uh, also uh, so covid covid 19 supply bottlenecks yeah and this is what our friends mentioned that the, the this time is just highlighting the issues in the uh, in the supply chain uh, people were aware about them uh, earlier also but they were just not uh, paying too much attention to uh, to solve those problems because there there are always there are always problems in the company in the organization the management just want to focus on the ones which are which are most critical in that time in that time it is all about time in this time what is most important what we need to do now because time is limited so is the money resources are limited so many issues they just want to focus that okay this is what just like in your house uh think about it uh, just so all of us can relate in your house there must be so many things which which you which needs fixing they say this needs to be fixed this needs to be fixed this needs to be fixed but based on the time you can allocate and your resources and the other things you have to do in your life uh other obligations you have in terms of using your money you might not fix a couple of things uh, but when the hurricane season would come you would want to fix those things at that time because you want to secure the secure the house or whatever yeah so you can think in that in that line also some terminologies they are using for example digital push learn those uh, in your in your own own time stay agile responsiveness yeah this is what uh, tasha mentioned in her 
in our example uh, about about inventory accounts more responsiveness more communication between the between the departments that is that is uh, important yeah seven tactics uh, this is interesting very interesting business insider uh, this is an amazing website uh, you should go on the website business insider at least once just once go on the website spend 5 10 minutes if you like the website then continue going on that uh, even beyond the semester you will learn a lot if you like the website if you don't like the website no problem uh, but personally speaking, I learn a lot uh, by going on on this website business insider uh, So please go on it once Spend 10 minutes if you like it continue going it if you don't like no problem So look at this seven tactics experts say retailers will use to manage excess inventory and Attempt to stay afloat during the coronavirus excess inventory and this is the same thing Tasha was uh, talking about excess excess inventory with stores indefinitely um, shuttered across most of the nation retailers are finding themselves with a mounting surplus of unsold inventory and nowhere to sell and you can link it with the farmer farmer example uh, which our friend gave that no space to uh, store also so nowhere to sell no space to store we spoke to several re retail experts who weigh in on the tactics retail retailers might take to handle excess inventory curb losses and stay float uh, during the coronavirus so if you if you scan through this article you will learn a couple of things in the sense that what they are what they are doing so look at this one the impact of the pandemic has been significant we have established that uh, since we uh, since we uh, started our online session uh, in all aspects in all discussions uh, this thing came up uh, we were talking about pandemic in one way or another but look at this one but the, it but it is forcing retailers to rethink their past processes and create more agile ones in order to survive this crisis so rethinking their past processes so you you sit down you look at the flow charts how things were flowing earlier you rethink them and now you create more agile ones in order to survive so although they it is not we don't appreciate coronavirus in our life we want it to go away as soon as possible even right now if it is possible but there are some positives which 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 business world has gained uh, from uh, from this so even if you look at this line uh, the systems inventory and all those issues in supply chain they are going to become more agile more robust so when the when the when the coronavirus uh, would uh, would go away and it will eventually it, it is going to end it is not here that for the rest of our life it is going to be here it is eventually going to go away might take some time but eventually it will end at that time the business business's performance is is automatically be improved from the past from from pre pandemic because they have especially if they survived so i am assuming that businesses survive so those businesses which survive they must have done something right they must have improved efficiencies and those type of things So this agility which they which they would have gained in uh, by going through this time it would help even afterwards in terms of sale gains and and so on uh, this i want to highlight a little bit i don't i'm not going like everything i'm just highlighting things and you will the articles which you like you will read them in your own time if you if you like otherwise it is up to you so cancelling seasonal orders we spend some time in talking about seasonality uh, and i remember ocean gave us very good interesting examples in that in that class kamla also gave very interesting example some other friends also gave very interesting example of seasonal forecast in that session when we were talking about seasonality so look at this one now uh, cancelling seasonal orders so this this season is now it's not summer or winter or whatever 
or Christmas or it is not that season. It is uh, or summer. It is not summer. It is it is COVID season. COVID season. So all those summer is there, but because COVID has influenced uh, customer demand, choices, preferences, need, everything has changed. So then the earlier forecast coming from seasonal fluctuations and those type of things that is not maybe very very relevant yeah seasonal forecast look at this one so in the in the earlier uh, article which i showed to guys uh, it it mentioned couple of pointers uh, it also said you can donate but it also said that you can hold on to the inventory hold on to the inventory yeah so it is not about getting panicked and getting rid of all the inventory please don't take take me wrong or take the discussion in a, in a wrong way that oh you just need to get rid of all inventory no it is not that some items are are of a nature which which can test the Test the time of uh, test the test of time. So, for example, this this one you can look at it. Pack and hold of timeless apparel items. Timeless, timeless items. And you can link it with you know your other courses like marketing and sales, those type of things. Uh, for example, marketing of uh, of luxury luxury items and. You can link it with uh, with uh, with some questions like uh, do do luxury uh, luxury products luxury items luxury clothing luxury shoes do they give do they give any discount do, ha do they have sales no they don't so what is that they, what are they going to do with their item? So maybe they will pack and hold because they just they just cannot afford to give it away like that and they cannot afford to give sales it they are better off if they don't give any sales and just destroy it just destroy it literally and you can run some search um, these uh, luxury luxury uh, luxury uh, manufacturers clothing luxury clothing just run a google google search right now you can do that uh, luxury luxury clothes are dumped dumped uh, or buried in the in the in the earth or destroyed company destroy luxury clothes they are luxury items they don't give away and they don't give discounts they just destroy it. Uh, as a matter of fact this clothing uh, if you if you run a search clothing how much these merchandiser these these clothes manufacturers they just just destroy how much clothes every year every season they just destroy it just run the search clothes clothes being destroyed by manufacturers and see what comes up spend some time on it five ten minutes you will learn a lot what they do and especially in the context uh, you are looking at poverty rates you are looking at sub-saharan african where people don't have clothes to to wear and stuff like that so they don't donate they just because they want to manage the perception uh, of their of their items uh, because they are luxury so if you just give away the perception of the consumer is they won't feel that it is luxury or if you give a discount or something like that they don't they don't feel that it is a luxury item but anyways look at look at this one pack and hold timeless apparel item yeah so some products like look at this one uh, consumers shop for products like sneakers all year long all year long yeah so these type of items you can off price retailers yeah not strong is one of them uh, i had a chance to go to one of their franchises in uh, last year summer uh, when i went to europe i i got a chance 
and then the transit somewhere on my way i got a chance to go to there they have other examples like you know old navy and stuff like that um uh, you can look it up in your own time yeah look at this one covid 19 five business continuity challenges coming from the retail industry what are the challenges let's look at them e-commerce number one e-commerce is here to stay e-commerce so it was already there but now it is high time uh so taking benefit of of this like there are many items you know there are many items which uh, which which are made in jamaica but uh, and other foreign for, uh, other foreign countries would want to have, have them but there is no ch channel so someone making a website putting their things on that marketing it and then of course it is not as easy as i am just saying it creating a website and marketing it you have to it's it's hard work just like anything in life uh, you have to select proper items you have to have a continuous supply of that items it is not that someone says here that yes i can make these things i will give it to you you and then after 6 months they say well you know i can't make them any so consistency all those type of things website how you are going to market how you are going to reach the audience Uh, some investment would be needed in that you have to you know uh, market your uh, website and stuff like that it is easier uh, but it is time consuming and it is hard work and over a period of time if your website get attraction and people come on that website then eventually you you can you can maybe you can and you would be surprised that how wide your reach can be just as i'm talking about it let me show you something uh, i'm not sure if you saw that or or not uh, this website which we have for our for our course uh, this one so in in this website can you see this this blue this blue map type of thing so if you click this uh, look at this So this this one look at this look at this so this year from as this year started just this year 5 months this is the reach of your website this website which we have so this big dot which you are seeing kingston jamaica that is where majority of the audience is coming from but look at this this america canada a little part of uh ecuador trinidad someone some countries in africa nigeria kenya south africa malaysia and some parts in in europe these countries these dots which are, people have visited from from these these places which you are seeing just in just in five just in five uh five months in these times yeah because online they want to know what is happening online and stuff like that so you can keep track of your whatever business is you you are you are um you are in using these type of uh, these type of free uh free uh, free uh, application and stuff like that so e-commerce is one of them a uh, sourcing and supply chain logistics must be managing sourcing where you are getting the thing and supply chain you can link it with last uh, last week's uh, discussion attracting and retaining talent is crucial so same way just like people will lose jobs and stuff like that same way same way attracting and retaining talent is 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 uh, is uh, is crucial yeah and this one this is what we are we are talking about so inventory tracking and management keeps customer yeah it keeps customer it is important inventory tra tracking more than uh, ever before 
and overall if you do these things it makes sustainable business business model if you are doing thinking about all these things that example which our friend gave about farming that example which our friend gave about inventory accounts uh, the example uh, oshane gave overall together and what we have been discussing overall in the in the discussion overall if you are doing those things it 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 gives you a better sustainability covid 19 changes shopping of course it changed shopping but we are already buying online we have had these discussions even even pre covid that people even in jamaica people are people buy their clothes online for example as we were talking about clothes they buy online they were doing online shopping and stuff so now think about it even is going to grow yeah so how if if things will have if people will shop online it will automatically make changes in the in the inventory automatically yeah and small brand uh, management so active active you guys one example you guys mentioned from there we got the word dynamic dynamic management of inventory always keeping keeping an eye so active dynamic flexibility and adaptive approach marked by firm focused decisions that is what companies are doing this is a this is a good talk this is a 37 minute minute long talk uh, you don't have to watch it but uh, you definitely need to think about these things which we which we are highlighting so you don't necessarily have to go through these specific articles but you definitely have to think about these these things which which we are talking about for example the questions you know raised like why brand succeed or fail despite the best efforts and brightest minds based on the thousands of brands healthy brand builders has assisted for more than 3 decades so this this thing you want to think about why brand succeed or fail despite the best efforts and brightest minds why many things issues in supply chain management uh that thing which our friend mentioned that it, although uh, there was some urgency and all those type of things but still people were not taking uh, the spread of covid 19 very seriously so still they were doing a minimum order quantity yeah so but i'm not saying they should have done more orders uh, more uh, they should have ordered more i'm not saying that uh, but definitely people could not foresee as much as uh, they should have and if we were reading on this the spread and what happened earlier with sars and uh, other type of diseases which happened in the in the past those people who were reading them they knew that this could this could spread so anyone who was reading this thing is not a, a surprise Uh, for them but people generally don't read even people who read they might not be for example i do enjoy reading but i was not reading on on covid 19 and it spread to be honest in the early days i was not because i to, to be to be frank uh, i was thinking that it's not going to come to jamaica yeah so i admit uh, i did not have that foresight that it is going to come to jamaica and maybe you guys also did not have the foresight and at that time earlier stage but so far china how it is going to come here the so same thing so as an inventory manager you have to be very thoughtful about these things this one i would i would want to talk this about this one a little okay oshane is saying i Okay, Oshane is saying I knew it was it was coming. So yes, so that needless to say, he is he is the smartest of all. So in January he knew that uh, uh, that uh, uh, COVID is going to be here, and I believe him. I'm sure he made some uh, some business profits by investing in some things <laughs> in this time. Yes. very good from so he is saying from december from december yeah as early as december so very good very good very good and that is why the company he works is a 
is one of one of good companies yeah so there are definitely some companies the people who are forecasting even from december they must have done something so we cannot say that no one no one no one really thought about it but generally speaking if if you ask me in december and in december and uh, and in december and in january i was not really thinking that it would it would come and he's telling us that you know people have made money out of this so definitely uh, there is no doubt uh, in not believing what he's saying definitely people have made and still are making uh, so and then on the same side uh, we don't have we don't have those those machines which our friend was talking about which will check the temperature so ch the churches uh could could open and stuff like that because we don't have so many of those that equipment in jamaica uh right now so yes on one hand what oshane is saying is right that people made money even from december they were planning and all those things but on the other hand even now there were many opportunities where people could have made money like that machine but it is not here yet but maybe you know things will change uh, in this in next week when we meet next and we next when we meet next week maybe you know we will see some stories that people have done something on that the surging amazon uh, effect on brands and trends in just in time inventory practices and so i would want to talk a little bit about amazon uh, in a in a moment okay three ways that companies can can help other industries with business communities what can they do so technology is one thing which will come again and again what can be done technology related thing so e-commerce roll out again uh then this is this is this is another this is this is another article it is not the same article but i just want to reiterate the point that there is kind of uh, consensus on this e-commerce uh, roll out and if you look at look at the look at the details the ai market in the retail sector is expected to grow by 14.05 billion through 2023 let's go over this again the ai market in the retail sector is expected to grow by 14 billion we are in 2020 already so three more years yeah very interesting details they are giving here supply chain logistic obstacle needless to say in the last session also it came again and again in today's session also security compliance concern and technology technology is the is the way forward so any 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 knowledge of technologies any knowledge of security uh, how to make data more secure uh, what are the new softwares being used in the job whatever you are doing uh, in inventory management uh, anyone who would have these skills uh, they will they will ensure that they are the ones uh, which are which remain in demand so they might not lose their lose their job when others will okay this one is extremely important uh, article coming from a very reputable uh, source mit technology review yeah so look at again this is linked with ai artificial intelligence our weird behavior during the pandemic is messing with ai models and it is going to mess ai models because it is not a status quo things are changing uh, buying behavior is changing preference uh, need everything is changing even things like logistics distribution timely timeliness of getting the product or equipment or supplies everything is changing and many times these big companies that is why i want to talk about um, amazon in a in a moment before we close i really want to talk about them because they are heavily dependent on technologies they are heavily dependent on ai that is that is where uh, their algorithms come from uh amazon websites heavily influenced by by technology so this time has definitely disrupted their 
their business in in some in some way and we will we will talk about it in a in a moment machine learning models trained on normal behavior are showing cracks forcing humans to step in to to set them straight yeah normal behavior they are so now humans to step in yeah humans to step in the so technology is there it is giving you reports and everything but uh you need to be mindful of how you are going to place orders how you what you are going to do so a human factor is is needed so yes technology has advanced a lot but times like these the current times of pandemic they need some human sensibility not just uh, our our forecasting models they are they are useful of course because you can use those models to understand what has been happening ha what has been happening in last 2 3 2 3 months in in coronavirus times and then see uh, the trend and then uh, do some you know report uh, on that uh, change your behavior looking at the trend in the last 2 3 4 months and and many businesses many companies are doing that uh, for example how how countries know that they have reached the peak in terms of coronavirus spread they are using these models uh, which are run by which are which are backed by some type of technology same way businesses are doing this also and then they are talking about you know hand sanitizers paper towels sprays uh, all those type of things you can you can look it up some success stories i would say you know try to find some success stories in your business in our country uh, or any other businesses uh, here is one success story my full uh, my full fi fulfillment company provides outstanding order management and fulfillment service during the coronavirus uh, pandemic so look at some of the success stories how people have been able to manage uh, in a in a good way let's talk a little bit about amazon and this is what i got from business insider again uh, i would like you to uh, get familiarized with this website business insider if you like it continue going on on it and learn anyways look at this honorable uh, jeff uh, has returned to day to day management of amazon after years of solely focusing on high impact projects like alexa after years of solely fo focusing after years of solely focusing he has returned to day to day management of amazon why why because amazon is run by technologies so many things are run automatic on an automated system but those algorithms are not suitable in times like this and that is why honorable jeff, that is one of the reasons why honorable jeff has returned to day to day management of amazon yeah i have not read the article in in full detail but i do want to uh, i would like you to also a uh, scan through it it's not going to take a lot of time just 5 5 minutes quick read you can spend 5 minutes and read it will it will help you so let's look at the highlights amazon ceo has resumed day to day management of the retail giant he has turned back to to the here and now problems facing amazon so honorable uh jeff bezos he has turned back to the here and now problems facing amazon as it faces multiple pressing problems multiple pressing problems yeah so even think about the companies who have a lot of resources and well established company organization like amazon they are also facing a lot of problem look at this in addition to seeing its supply chain disrupted by covid 19 so don't don't feel bad if if our smaller smaller businesses although they are big in jamaica but when you compare it with big companies like amazon we, are, we our businesses are small on that scale so don't get worried if if our supply chains are being disrupted because this is the, this is this is happening globally it is not that our businesses our supply chains were not good 
even good supply chains relatively speaking like amazon they are also facing challenges the supply chain disrupted by covid amazon is the target of a backlash from workers as at its warehouse who are unhappy with their treatment during the pandemic you should read a little bit on that that why the workers are not happy and if you go back in time even before before uh, coronavirus you go back one year two years before just run a google search amazon employees unhappy so although we are familiar that amazon is a wonderful company and they take care of their employees and all those things which we have been talking about in our discussions earlier need to think about you need to think about uh you need to think about you need to read just run the uh, run the google search amazon workers unhappy so you will find many stories like even back in the day they were they were not happy because amazon want to pay less uh, to the that type of stuff and they want to bring in technologies and replace them as much as possible so even in these time now they are facing backlash or something someone wanted to say something or something the people are i was not seeing that so please go ahead if you want to say anything you can stop me any time in terms of like if you want to uh, say yes please go ahead yes sir um i was reading an article um that said that jeff bezos is said to be the first the world's first trillionaire by 2026 right and uh, i think that amazon as a company on a whole was literally built for this type of pandemic because they are indeed a one stop shop you can you can literally buy anything on amazon and they have been strengthening their supply chain they are the first company that um did um came up with the whole drone um for delivery they are the first one that came up with self checkout where you know you have your amazon wallet and you just simply pick up your goods and you know go into the store pick up your goods come back out and you know it, it it's electronically read what you picked up and charges your account so i think uh, amazon was one of those unique companies whether or not they had the foresight um that there was going to be a, a pandemic but it was one of those unique companies that really really was just prepared on a different scale for something of this measure and uh, you know a lot of companies could really learn from amazon despite you know the humanitarian aspect of it as it regards to you know a lot of persons do think that they're not doing enough in terms of the covid fight and you know their the workers are saying that they're not paid enough and they don't have enough benefits etc and they have to be front line of course you know you can think about um there are a lot of you know opportunities in that area but i think in terms of amazon's business plan and their supply chain management i thought um it it's absolutely incredible and definitely something to be mimicked and it also shows um how far well not even how far but um the the beauty in in innovativeness and ingenuity because i mean a lot of companies would have thought that amazon was doing too much when it came on to experimenting with different modes of delivery but look at it now you know a lot of companies wished that they had that you know that type of mechanisms in place so kudos to them apart from the other stuff Yes of course and thanks thanks for that near there is no no argument in that amazon is a is a is a very big company and uh, the person who people who made it they are of course exceptional exceptional people no doubt about that thanks thanks for the pointers really appreciate it yeah so please uh, do some reading on on that what they are doing and um, keep an eye on you know how how these companies like amazon and other companies are going to manage their supply chain inventory management and so on so forth uh, many articles you will find online like this one pandemic shed light on weak links in the inventory strategy weak link yeah you are going so it came in today's discussion it came last week discussion 
you guys are talking about that the weak links are uh, getting more obvious so you can uh, run some run some search like you know and they are talking about same things which we are we are talking about like for example look at this one, this highlighted section just in time inventory system yeah so you just have to read these things and link it with our discussions uh, in the in the last session and definitely good to read the book chapter because then because it it is in a in a good uh, good layout and step by step approach so uh, you can get an overall understanding of what what is happening uh, in that so what is the what is the future of inventory management yeah what where are we going yes uh, uh, try to make uh, supply chain more agile uh, yes try to use technologies uh, and so on uh, that is what i think uh, is what the future of uh, inventory management ma management is uh, more more towards e-commerce uh, uh, but then again, you know, you guys remember that I asked you a quiz question in one of the sessions when we joined online that what do you guys think? Uh, people, people read more online or uh, these books, magazine, do they read more online or the sales are more online or the traditional paper based? The majority of you guys said that it is more online and it may seem like that, but that was not the case. Majority of the books are sold in in paper in print format worldwide globally speaking same way same way if i if i ask you that uh, what do you guys think more of the business in the world is done electronically using technology or the traditional way even in these times as we are in the pandemic and so on one might want to think that e-commerce is very big and so on and especially when you are thinking about big giants like uh, like eBay, uh, well eBay, but they, they are pretty big. Uh, Alibaba, Amazon, these are big giants, and other companies, many other. So you might think that you know it, it's big, but if you if you take global figures, you will know that uh, traditional uh, selling is 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 more than more than online. Anyways, look at look at this one. Uh, one report is saying that 1.1 trillion dollars were lost worldwide due to inventory distortion. Please take a moment uh, to think about this. 1.1 trillion dollars were lost worldwide due to inventory distortion. Just inventory distortion. Just that, the small thing. It's not even talking about inventory management. Just distortion in the figures in inventory management. It is like I am asking you how much in the inventory, and instead instead of five you say four, or instead of five you say six, and same way a little distortion here and there. Just distortion we are talking about. Please read a little bit about that. What do they mean by inventory distortion? And just from that, 1.1 trillion dollars were lost. And then they are talking about artificial intelligence. They are talking about Industry 4. So it would be good to read. Just uh, run a Google search on Industry 4. What is in Industry 4? Try to understand that. Using AI sensors, Internet of Things. You know, run a search on what is in. I've I've asked you earlier when we were meeting uh, face to face. I asked you to run search on uh, industry for Internet of Things, uh, 5G, artificial intelligence, uh, 3D printing, and other things. So, if you have not done that yet, uh, you should do it. Uh, not for exam purposes, generally speaking, more for your own uh, your own understanding and and so on. Yeah, lead times. You have to think about lead times, the time it takes, you know, you place the order and once it reaches you, you have to think about those type of things. Six techniques to bulletproof your inventory management processes. What can you do? 
safety stocks if you guys remember we discussed that in one of the sessions earlier session first in first out uh, fifo fifo lifo lifo last in first out last in last out those type of things run a search on that batch tracking drop shipping uh, six sigma run a run a search on these you know these terminologies and try to fit those in the discussion demand forecast yeah demand and we established that the demand forecast the figures are you know distorted the demand because they were run by algorithms uh, technology uh, run by technology the forecast can be misinterpreted and these these you know these questions you can read on these type of websites but more importantly i would like you to think them on your own like from your own experience from this discussion from what you will read in the book try to answer these questions like what are the goals of inventory management what do you think what is inventory management trying to achieve yes efficiency effectiveness but go a little bit deeper yeah link it with supply chain management issue link it with customer satisfaction link it with quality how do you measure successful inventory management how do you know that one one style of inventory management is better than the other for that i asked you i gave you that exercise that in your own organizations please go to the departments who are looking at inventory management ask them how they are doing it ask them about the best practices ask them to show you just briefly 5 10 minutes just show you quickly what are the what are the what are the software they are using ask them some questions like what is what softwares uh, your competition is using uh, to manage their inventory you would want to know that just like that example which our friend gave about honey and uh, national uh, i would want to know if you are in national you would want to know what software you know honey is using where they are investing how do they manage their inventory the more you know about these things the better you can compete with them so you, because you want to compete with them on, on their loose link the link in the supply chain which is loose so this information that honey does not have their own uh, you know uh, fleets their own trucks they are on contracts and stuff like that national have more so national can now maximize on this now because this is the time where you know some issues with the contracts and so on so forth for honey so this is the time where they can national can do something on this especially in the context that national is not way far in terms of quality when you are talking talking about uh, other the other uh, talking about the competition in the market yeah see these simple type of questions you should think about think about them in your own in your own time inventory management softwares would want to think you know what type of softwares companies are are using what data is required what what do they put in those softwares uh those that link it with the earlier discussion which we which we had for example this one track sales across multiple warehouses and multiple supply chain so it is not that only one supply chain is there yes it is one supply chain but within that there are many suppliers who are trying to fulfill the the demand of the chain so pay attention to this across multiple warehouse and uh, one of our friends when she was talking about uh, inventory and accounts uh, she mentioned communication within the company try to link it with that communication within the company so track sales across multiple warehouse and multiple supply chain notifies you when stock runs out and many times automatic automatically the the next order is replaced once you reach a reach a number in terms of your inventory automatic so that is what we meant when we were talking about use of technologies and so on it's a very fascinating uh, area of study um, if you are interested in in this this part of you know business inventory management 
because it can easily you can in one business you are managing inventory you can uh, easily transfer to some other type of business also if some inventories are there like you know you can these skills are transferable also to a decent extent yeah so scan items into inventory using a barcode barcode scanner you can think about rfid technology uh visual visual technologies are there you would have to run some searches and read on that these are some names of names of some uh, softwares the products the products include in this issue are these are some of them you don't have to look at them just wanted to show you that there are different softwares which companies use but definitely i would again say that in your own business wherever you work uh do stop by 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 the people who look look into invent, inventory try to talk with them for like 5 10 15 minutes even in the break or something just a casual talk uh try to understand what is try to understand you know what issues they face how do they deal with those issues uh, ask them what skills are required to become a good inventory manage, manager what skills are required uh so you can so they might be able to you know say say something say something on that other examples like for example you know in 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 earlier discussion some of our friends were talking about uh, uh, these issues which hospitals are facing uh, in terms of uh, this the spread of pandemic the issues hospitals are facing so you can look at the success stories of some of the hospitals which uh, which placed uh, good good uh, inventory management and they were able to you know minimize the challenges and so on some stories you can run on that on another on an, another note not directly linked with inventory management but on another note look at this one what customers buy is not necessarily what they want please think about this what customers want uh, what customers buy is not necessarily what they want the buying is something else you know you just just like uh, you we all of us have experienced we go to we go to shop grocery store or pharmacy or something like that and we come out with things which we did not really you know plan to buy or something we just bought it for different reasons maybe the color was nice maybe the packing was nice maybe it felt uh, attractive different reasons you don't necessarily want it but you just you know buy it in that moment so not directly linked with the with inventory management but because inventory management would would be linked with with sales eventually and uh, sales would be linked with this concept so it just came so think about this uh, what customers buy is not necessarily what they want uh, try to reflect you know because customers don't know what they really want they don't really know we when we when we buy something we are influenced by so many other things which makes us do that buy make that buy uh we are influenced by so many other factors not necessarily we need it is think about think about you know buying a new phone yeah you you want a new phone yes look at your old phone especially if it is you can do it now just take out your phone and look at it it works fine it is maybe it is broken a little bit maybe it is old but it works fine it makes the call is giving you the basic features but you still want to buy a new phone why not that you really really need it you just you just want to buy it because maybe your friends have new phones or the people you hang out new phone or 
you are not comfortable taking out your phone out so you could just many times people would and i'm not talking about you specifically i'm talking generally all of us me and everyone many times we buy things which we don't necessarily need it so buying is something totally different so as a as an inventory manage, manager you want to you want to think about that also although it is not directly linked so you manage your inventory uh, based on the forecast you have made for sales so you have inventory so if you have something in the inventory you have thought that you will be able to sell it but then what customer buy is not necessarily what they want so all those that analysis which you have run in the market that what is consumer preference what is consumer choice what consumer really wants what would happen to all that data because sometimes customer just buy things so you can think about that okay that scan uh, uh, one one of the one of the um, one of the readings uh, showed uh, scanning the items and in that i mentioned rfid so this is one article for that to make the most of rfid harness capabilities above and beyond inventory management so you can run a search rfid inventory management see see what comes up and try to get a hang of that it is the same thing like when you go to buy you go to buy um, some some shirts or something like that you go to the shop and in the in the back here they have some tag and they uh, they run it across the across the counter and then they remove it uh, and if you don't remove that tag and you try to go out of the shop uh, it start beeping ting 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 some it start making some noises so that is that is you know it it helps you track the track the shirts track the track the garments and it also tracks the security yeah so you can link it with inventory management also and we spoke about technologies di digitizations so you can find many articles uh, on that so look at this investing in supply chain processes that will improve the accuracy of operations is a no brainer it is a no brainer yeah so championing supply chain accuracy with digi digitalization digitization so it will just to just improve but then again it is going to bring in so many challenges digitization is going to bring so many challenges so you can read we did not speak about that at all the challenges inventory management can face because of digitization so this is a nice little you know take home assignment for you try to run some search on on this that what are some of the some of the challenges which uh, which uh, supply chain will face as uh, more and more inventory management is being uh, digitized yeah what are some of the challenges you can do that uh, in your own time the so same things so i think we have covered the basics like the e-commerce they are talking about uh, they are going to talk about technical you know assistance and they are going to talk about technology like for example automation ai data analytics uh, as a matter of fact you know this this thing data an analytics uh, if you are trying to make some career in operations and stuff like that i would i would say do some course or something on this data analytics uh, this would this would come very handy and would look good uh, on your on your resume also and you guys have experience also so if you do some some courses on data analytics and i'm saying this because in these times a lot of uh, courses uh, universities have made free and uh, uh, stuff like that but you would have to run some search and maybe spend some time in finding if you if you have time and to do something on that so when you will look at the reading for the from the chapter uh, they have a case on amazon but the only thing is that because the book is uh, old 
so but still although it is old they still have amazon case so that shows that how important amazon is as a company whenever someone is going to talk about inventory management supply chain management because they run on that the success of uh, amazon is because of their success of managing supply chain uh, yeah and inventory because it never happens that you know you you are on amazon and the what you are looking for is not there it might happen in some cases but it will always show you that you can come back in two days in three days and whatever and they uh, their model is dependent on uh, fast fast delivery same day same day delivery 24 24 hour delivery especially if you are in the us and the cost so the fast fast so fast to make the model fast your inventory has to be very very good very very good as you lose products uh, from the inventory as you do sales automatically you, you keep on adding placing new orders so it's con consist consistent thing and because that consistent thing was dependent on technologies ai and so on so forth and now that is being disrupt disrupted or changed that is maybe one of the reason that honorable ceo jeff Jeff Bezos, the article I showed you, he is now actively being involved in day-to-day -day operations, how to do things on a daily basis. You can look at the definitions in your own time, please. The objective of inventory management is to strike a balance between inventory investment and customer service. So they are highlighting on two things, although, although there are so many things which you can think about, and you will you will see different different uh, different ways uh, people have described inventory management uh, in different books we can run some search on that also anyways in this one it is inventory investment and customer service importance we have you know we have tried to talk about that uh, functions of inventory you can pay attention to things like hedging 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 against inflation uh, hedging against uh, uh the uh some product uh, getting short in the market hedging against uh, different season you can think about that in your own time different types of you know inventories uh do some reading on that uh you can think about the example uh tasha gave about uh, different units different uh, departments different individuals which would have their own inventory so some people would be in charge of uh, raw material, part of raw material inventory. Some people would be in charge of work in progress inventory. Uh, some people would be in charge of repairs. Some people would be finished goods. And don't just limit yourself to the slides. Always think what else you can add to the slides. For example, if I look at this one, I'm not seeing uh, like the return goods. Yes. So I was saying that don't just uh, don't just uh, stop at what the slides are telling. You all, always try to look a little bit a little bit beyond. So for example, this one uh, when I look at this this slide, finished goods and these repair and whatever, I'm not seeing. For example, uh, uh, for example, uh, return return goods. So there must be some inventory of uh, of return goods. So maybe you can put them in the repair or Maybe you can reassemble them, take out the parts which uh, which you can use, which which can be used elsewhere, something like that. So because that is also a big part of inventory management, the return goods uh, are are the bad bad ones. That is also you know some functionality can be achieved uh, from, or some benefit can be achieved from from that. How items are you know uh, classified and stuff like that. This is a very famous model. ABC Rana Rana search search on that so A is essentially you know high annual dollar volume uh, where you know the more uh, more profit in is class A then the medium one class B then the class C so different policies different protocols uh, different inventories uh, inventory managers would 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 have this one is a famous one uh, ABC. 
other things like you know cycle cycle counting how how often you should uh, you should you should uh, place your your order how much time it takes uh, from your supplier to reach uh, at at your uh, at your door uh, when you are placing some uh, some orders for let's say raw materials uh, you can think it with other courses like international business management uh, especially in the context where businesses are sourcing their products from uh, different countries and then again you can link it with supply chain like how the how the shipments would stop in tank like uh, like the one which we are facing and what companies are doing essentially nowadays to recover from from that these terms like you know holding cost ordering cost setup cost you run some search on that holding cost just then just like the name says you know how much it would cost you to hold it i showed you a couple of couple of uh, readings where they were saying you can hold on to the to your to your to your product uh, also if you guys saw that so holding cost you would want to think about ordering cost you know what is the total order cost uh, so for example if you are ordering a pizza from pizza hut and you make the call and you go there to pick it up or even if you are not going you will give some tip uh, to the guy who will bring it for you uh, all of those are part of ordering ordering cost so not just the actual price which you gave to pizza hut all other things like you know like you should have a phone uh, you should have credit on the phone uh, all those things are also part of ordering cost and run some search search on that some simple some simple formulas are there and will set up set up cost a uh, demand over 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 quantity times s we are not hard spend some time on you know running those running those calculation here are some some practice questions for for you for example you know uh, determine, determine economic order quantity so uh, one of our friends spoke about minimum order quantity when he was giving his example so economic order quantity what is that so these things are are given uh, demand is given 1000 unit 1000 units setup uh, cost per order is given 10 dollar uh, per order holding cost per unit for the year is given 0.5 you are just putting in the numbers and trying to figure it out go through these these questions in your own time spend some time on the reading the book chapter also and if there is anything you you don't understand after after going through these examples and also talk with me some clips i have i have posted uh this one for example eoq economic order quantity formula if you play this this clip it is going to it is going to show you the calculation so i don't want to spend time you know in doing the calculation over here uh the ones on the in the in the slides you can you can easily search for them using youtube so i have posted one so it takes you through how the calculation is being done it is 10 minute long so you can watch this clip you can watch this you can look at the solution in the book and you can there are so many you know uh, videos already on youtube where you can understand how the calculation is done and it is it is simple it's simple calculation not hard so this is this is it uh, here are two examples i have posted you can look at them also if you have time uh, and so on i think that is what i wanted to discuss in terms of inventory inventory management uh, if there is anything you guys want to want to say in terms of inventory management please go ahead if there is any important pointer which you think we should have discussed but we did not uh, this is good time to talk about that uh, but essentially speaking uh, 
inventory management uh two pointers if not more can take away one is that uh, e-commerce uh because businesses are going to go electronic online digitization so all those things you would want to keep in mind as you are thinking about inventory management because it is going to change the the land landscape of inventory management definitely uh inventory management understanding of your product that is very important we did not speak about that in today's session because in earlier sessions we have spoken about that particularly in job design uh, we spoke about that a design of product we spoke about that good understanding of your of your of your business that is very important good understanding of your product that is very important a uh, good understanding of customer although we said that it is hard to really understand customer because customer is sometimes buy things which they don't want so it is a moving target but as much as humanly possible you need to do those things and then the incorporation of uh, technology like algorithms artificial intelligence uh, all those things you would want to think about it and i would link it in closing i would link it with the, our first session first first session where we were talking about 3d printing think about just this technology 3d printing where you can have a printer and you are you know you can print whatever you want if you have the if you have the raw material and stuff like that how that will change inventory management think about that inventory management pick any business like you are like let's say you are automotive industry and you do something with the parts of the cars now you are 3d printing so you can just print just in time when you need it according to the specification requirements right away you have the material you have the 3d printer you can just print and you are done once that thing is there what is what is the what is the usefulness of these slides which which are there yes they are useful just for the you know basic understanding but whole setup of inventory management is changed whole setup of inventory management is disrupted yeah of course it won't happen overnight but just keep in mind that these this is where the world is going and especially in the context where we said that 3d printing is not just the uh, just the parts and these type of thing across industries 3d printing is happening if you guys remember i i think i told you that you can also print your food uh, 3d 3d printing print your food yeah so even if i if i 3d just you just have to 3d printing print your food i'm sure something is going to yeah see i hope you can see this 3d printing food and cooking it with laser what is this you know there is a they have this this thing you can yeah this is it so i have i have muted the voice i have muted the voice but you can look at this look at this so they are 3d printing food so they have all these programs this is the material they are going to use and look at this this now this they are, they are they are going they are eating it they print it and they are eating it can you imagine what is happening so once this is their inventory management is totally different totally different algorithm and fascinating time fascinating yeah and look at this now this this and this is the beauty of algorithm because you are watching this look at the on on the right side of the right side column up next what is up next look at this up next on the right side they are they are suggesting some some videos let's play the up next hershey's the next one is hershey's global international business what is this using 3d printer, printers to make chocolate kisses and we are familiar with this kisses is very famous even in even in jamaica you go to any grocery store you are going to find this chocolate kisses small they are very tasty tasty 
and kind of addictive so what is this they are they are 3 deep look at that yeah. so what happened to all the supply chain inventory management where you are going to put and what you are just have your machines you are print to order people are ordering you are just printing it for them this is have your name on it the name of your loved ones whatever you want to write can write on that and right away you can you can even 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 the even the cover you can you know modify it based on special request of course you would have to of course you i want to want to pause look at the title there harshi senior marketing manager for new technology look at that title please harshi's senior marketing manager for new technologies so they have a guy who is specifically going to focus on new technologies that is the significance of what uh, technologies and these things can bring and then there are so many other things yeah so so you it's your now it's your call how deep you want to go go in this try to understand as much as as possible if you read something interesting you can always send me send me uh, send me an email and share with with me if you if you hear something interesting uh, so that is it for for today's session i want to thank you very much for participating in uh, in today's uh, today's discussion really appreciate it four or five examples which you gave in the beginning and couple of examples which you gave in the in the middle they really help me to uh, take the take the discussion forward so thank you uh, very much